I'm going to be building this compact yet powerful gearbox that lets you use NEMA 17 stepper motors in applications such as robot arms. Oh, and it has a sensor as well. Now I want to use GT2 belts and pulleys for this, however I also want it to be 3D printed. So I've printed this test pulley. The large pulley at the bottom is 60 teeth and the small pulley at the top is 20 teeth. It seemed to print quite nicely, but when it comes to testing it, I find that the larger pulley, the belt holds on really nicely. But putting any stress on the smaller pulley, the belt just slips round it. So instead of 3D printing the smaller pulley, I'm going to use one of these bought pulleys, little aluminium metal ones, the kind of thing you normally get on a 3D printer. This is the reduction train I'm going to be using. I've got the NEMA 17 stepper motor here with a 20 tooth pulley on top. Then a belt will go from that over to a 60 tooth pulley, which is bonded to a 20 tooth pulley on the top. A second belt links it to another 60 tooth pulley, giving a final reduction of 9 to 1. That final pulley has a bracket on it to allow me to attach some 2020 aluminium extrusion. We'll start by building up our compound gear. We take a 5mm axle and place that inside the pulley, and then we use a spacer and a bearing to ensure that it's in the right place. We can then just tighten that up onto the axle, and with a couple of drops of superglue, secure it to the large 60 tooth pulley. Now we've built up our compound pulley, we can move on to the full assembly. These are all the parts that we need. We'll start by pressing a couple of 5x16mm bearings into the bearing holders. Next we're using these M3x25 bolts as tensioners. You can see they've got two nuts on, one right at the head, the other one running free on the shaft. They'll just pop straight into these holes. Next is the NEMA 17 stepper motor with the 20 tooth pulley already attached. It's upside down and we'll see why in a sec. The bearing carrier simply fits over the two screws that we've already put in and then we'll slide back and forth easily. Our compound pulley drops into that bearing. We need to adapt the size of the motor pulley so it'll fit the bearings that we want to use on this. So we just put a little top hat on there, plonk a bearing on top, the output pulley goes straight on top of that and then we fit another bearing on top of the output pulley. With all of that done we just need to fit the belts and then put the top cover on. So now we have an assembled gearbox, we just need to tension the belts. We can do this by using a pair of pliers to push out the bearing holders, and then we can do up the nuts to keep them in place. Hooking the stepper up to a driver, we can see it actually works quite nicely. But if we now stop the motor, keeping the power applied to give holding torque, we can see the problem with belt gearboxes, which is the belts tend to stretch a bit. So we get a little bit of play. In fact, if we bang a piece of aluminium extrusion into the hole there, we can see that we get quite a lot of play in that gearbox, even though there's no actual backlash. So to get round the belt stretch, we're going to use this little AS5600 magnetic encoder. If you put a magnet in front of it and rotate it, it will actually tell you the exact position of that magnet. So we just mount the sensor into this little 3D printed bridge and then the bridge itself gets mounted straight onto the gearbox assembly over the output pulley. We can then hook it up to our Arduino. It just uses the plus 5 volt and ground pins and then the SDA and SCL for the I2C communication. Using the sensor is really easy. We can simply use the get raw angle function to find out what the angle is. It returns some fairly odd units, so we've got a little function here which then converts that to degrees. We'll then print it out to the serial terminal so we can see what's going on. Now if we move the output pulley by hand, we can see the value changing in the serial console. So let's connect the stepper motor back up. Here we're just going to use the Excel stepper library for Arduino. So our code is in this move to function. We're just going to tell it to move to 190 degrees. Then we just get the current angle that the sensor is measuring and work out what the distance is from that angle to the angle we want to be at. Then we just tell the stepper to move at a speed equal to a constant times the distance that we've worked out there. We can raise or lower that constant to change the speed of the motor. And then the move to line just tells the stepper to move in a certain direction. We don't actually care what the value here that we're moving to is, just whether it's plus or minus. So running this should make the stepper motor move. And then with a different value.
It sounds a bit graunchy though, and it does run rather slowly. So what we really want to do is run it a bit faster. Let's try changing the speed to 100 and see what happens. So that moves a lot better, but right at the end it's vibrating back and forth. The reason it does this is because right at the end of its travel when it's got, say, a tenth of a degree to move, it's actually moving really, really fast. So what we want to do is slow it down when it gets to the end of its movement. So we can do this by changing the speed from a linear equation to a quadratic equation. At the moment, if the distance is 10, then the speed would be 100 times 10, which is 1000. If we knock the multiplier down to 10 though and make this a quadratic equation, then it would be 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1000. But if we take distance down to 1, then it would just be 10 times 1 times 1, which is only 10. So let's see what happens. That seems to work. Let's try a different angle. So the problem there is that distance actually has a sign on it. It can either be positive or negative. Before, where there was just one distance, we would get either a positive or negative answer out. But now, where we're timesing distance by itself, it's always going to be a positive number. Minus 1 times minus 1 equals 1. So we can solve this by multiplying distance by the absolute value of distance. So for example, minus 1 times 1 would equal minus 1. So that seems to be working quite nicely now, but let's take a closer look at what the motor's actually doing. I've put a little silver mark on the belt that comes off the motor pulley so we can see what's happening. If I now apply some force to the output pulley, you'll be able to see the motor actually moves in the opposite direction thereby taking up any belt slack. This means that even though I'm pressing down on the output pulley and trying to move it, it doesn't actually move. Right, let's test the torque of this gearbox. So I've got a small box hooked up 20 centimeters away from the pivot point of the gearbox. We can place some weights in there and lift it up, seeing at what weight it fails. I'm afraid I don't have any proper weight, so we'll have to make do with lumps of steel I've got lying around. This is 600 grams. And now 825 grams. A full kilogram. Twelve hundred and fifty grams. That's the stepper motor losing steps. Let's try a little bit less. I can make up twelve hundred grams out of some odds and ends lying around. That seems to work fine, so I think we can call this 1200 grams at 20 centimetres, or 250 grams at a metre, which is about 2.48 newton metres of torque. Next time I'm going to be comparing the torque produced from this gearbox to the torque created by a cycloidal one of a similar size. So please subscribe to see that. As usual, all the CAD and code for this are on my GitHub page linked down below. Please hit the like button if you've enjoyed this, and if there's anything you think I should have done differently, then let me know down below in the comments. See you later.